Uh, sorry it's taken me so long. It's been on my mind. Um, I just keep pushing it off. Summer's been crazy. Um, but here I am. We're going to do it. And it's one of my favorite things. It's the photo transfers that we put onto wood. Like this. So cool. Um, we literally transfer the photo onto the board. So it's not much podging a photo. It's transferring the ink. Um, so it's really cool, a really unique uh, project or gift you can do. Um, so I'm going to try and walk you through that. Um, I have a bunch of them I was doing this weekend, so they're in different steps, which will work perfect because I can go through and kind of show you different ins and outs. Um, I've been doing these for a while and gone through a lot of trial and error. And I finally, I feel good about where I am with them. And so hopefully I can share my information with you. And if it's something you want to try, you can avoid all my mis mistakes. So, a um, couple of things I want to touch. There's three things that I want to first let you know about. Um, most importantly, or the first two, you literally print this on paper. I'm going to do one of my kids. Um, it's printed on paper, but it must be done with a laser jet printer, not an ink inkjet. So I've tried doing both and it doesn't work with the inkjet. So must be laser. Um, quality of the photo is very important. Um, professional photos turn out awesome because they're so clear. Um, a lot of people want to use ones on their phone, which can work if it's not pixelated. If there's any pixelation, when you see it on your screen, when you send it to me and I make it bigger, it's going to become pixelated and not super clear. So clarity is super important. I did take this one on my phone, but it's pretty clear. We had good lighting and so I think it's going to transfer just fine. Um, and the third tip that I want to share with you, if you have words or writing on your shirt or something in the back room that has words on it, you'll want to reverse image the photo because when you put it on it'll read backwards so when you print it and it's reading backwards that's perfect because then when we put it on the board it'll read correctly um, so let's get started it's not a lot of supplies either which is super nice so One thing I want to share with you, this is trial and error for me, is I always now paint my board white. Just put a quick clear white coat on and when it's dry I also sand it so that it's super smooth. Um, and this is because if you just have the wood back here and maybe you want this look, you can really see the wood grains um, come through, which isn't a bad thing, but for me I think it kind of affects the quality of the paper. It almost looks like it has oil stains sometimes, um, just depending on the wood. So I'm using plywood for this one, which again is my favorite thing to work on. I've done it on the cedar planks um, and pine. Pine is good, but I like the plywood the best. So painted it white, it's dried, it's sanded, and it's ready to go. This is just um, a transfer medium. I order mine off Amazon um, and it's a matte finish by Liquitex. So I'll take a screenshot of this um, so you can get a good look at it. And basically just gonna, I another tip I use, some people put it on the photo and transfer it. I have decided that I like to put it on my board first best. Not too much. I'll show you. Um, I'll hold it up so you can kind of see how much I put on. Just kind of paint it on there. And this photo, I had two of them. I trimmed off the white edges from the paper, so I just got the photo. You can see, just super even, not anything 
thicker, clunky. I'm gonna put a titch more on right there. Okay, and then photo, lay it down. And once you put this on here, guys, you do not wanna pull it off and resituate it. You wanna just go with it wherever you put it. Okay, so when I am applying these, I always start in the middle. Oops, a little bit. Start in the middle and then work my way out to try and get out any air bubbles. Make sure it's got a good solid stick to it. And wipe off any extra of the gel. And so, see it's on there sometimes. The other thing I like with the plywood is I get less air bubbles. With the cedar planks, I found it has a more tendency to wrinkle. Um, so, another reason I like the plywood or the pine. Um, so, now that it's on here, this is the hard part. <laughs> I have found a good 12 hours is best to let it sit and transfer. Sometimes I like to do them at bedtime and then wake up the next morning and I'm excited to get the paper off, but please wait 12 hours. I've done 10 hours, it's not as good. 12 hours, I know it's hard, um, but you won't regret having to redo it. It doesn't turn out. So, I'm gonna set this aside and I'll finish, tomorrow I'll come back and show you how we take off the paper. Um, but I'm gonna be patient <laughs> and let this dry. Um, but there are a couple other things I'm gonna touch on uh, for this. Okay, so I let this wait and sit a good 24 hours. I know in my previous post I said I like to wait 12 hours, um, but everything I've read online says you should wait 24 hours. So that's what I'm gonna tell you guys too, just to be safe. Um, so now it's time to remove your paper. And to do this, it generally, generally takes two steps. Um, the first time you're going to go over, you're going to get a majority of the paper off. You don't want to rub too hard because you can rub the picture off. So just real softly to remove a majority of the paper. And then once it dries, it'll have like a white haze over the top, which is just more paper. So once it's good and dry, I go over it once more, pressing a little bit harder this time to remove all that excess paper. So, this is the really tricky part. It's stressful because you don't want your project to be ruined um, if you take off the photo, which unfortunately it's happened to me a lot of times. Um, and all I can really say is that the more you do it, the better you get at it. So I take a rag, wring it out, and just get it about this wet to start. So you can kind of start to see the photo come through. Then I start rubbing and I I prefer to go in a motion kind of like so motion pattern and you can see the paper just kind of starts to crumble off and there will be some areas where the photo comes off you can kind of see and that's just kind of the look of it too though um you want to be careful not to do that on their face sometimes you don't have control over and I found I can be as careful as I want but that's just kind of the look um kind of a worn out rustic look um so I just I try and go with that Okay, so I did one round of rubbing off the paper and I let it dry and you can see what it looks like. It's 
got all that white haze on it. So that is when you start rubbing the second time. And this time, you hardly need any water, in fact. Usually I just use my fingers. I did get it a little wet. But really important, I would rather have to, a lot to rub off the second time than to rub too hard and ruin my photo. So, be patient. Even if it takes you three times, it's definitely worth it than having to do redo the photo or ruining your project and getting frustrated and giving up altogether. <laughs> And Jezzy's face there you can see it comes off a lot clearer the second time. Got Jezzy and Tristan Dutton. You can see Brody and Emmy are still all fuzzy. So I'm gonna finish rubbing these off. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so after you rub off any of the extra paper that's on here, it's ready to be sealed. And also, that's a good time, either before or after that step, to finish your edges. Um, the look I was going for, I wanted the white to poke out here, so um, I cut it just a little bit bigger and ran my white up. And then I sand, uh, stained and kind of distressed my edges to give it that look. And the next step is going to be to seal it. Once you feel good about having all the paper off, it's nice and smooth, we're going to seal it. You can, for this, I have so many different sealers, <laughs> it's kind of pick or choose. But a lot of people use Mod Podge or I use polyacrylic sometimes too. I'm going to use the Mod Podge because... My poly acrylic's almost out. So, foam brushes, remember they're my favorite. And just run it over there, and it has a little white, um, looks like it's a little white, off white on here, but it dries clear. So, and I like to keep my brush strokes going the same way. They'll kind of disappear, but. So you can kind of, it looks a little shiny now, but it'll dry. Okay, one last time, I just want to go over the steps for the photo transfer. I've broken it down into six. Um, step number one is to prep your materials. That includes cutting, painting, and sanding your board that you're going to transfer to, and printing your photo. Really important to use a laser jet, not an ink jet. Some people say dry tone, but that doesn't mean much to me. Um, so print them on the laser, reverse them if you need to. Step number two is to apply a nice, thick, even coat of the transfer medium and put your, down your paper photo. Smooth it out and let it dry a good 24 hours. I'm sometimes risky and go 12 because I'll put them on before bed and wake up and do it in the morning, but better do 24 just to be safe. Um, step number three is to carefully Get a wet sponge or rag, get the board damp, and just carefully rub off the paper. I do this in two steps. Step number one is to get a majority of the paper off. I let it dry, have that white, fuzzy, hazy, white coat on it, and that's the remaining paper. You won't see it if it's wet. It's only when it dries that you'll see it. And then go through and rub that off. Step number four is to finish off your edges however you choose. You can stain them. I sometimes like to add a pop of color to mine too to make the photo stand out. Step number five is to seal it. And step number six 
is to finish it off with any additional accessories. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you real quick on some that I've done. I'll finish them. This one I'm going to show you first, and I kind of showed you at the beginning, are some engagement photos I did for a couple. And I am not even going to add anything to them, you guys. They are so perfect just as is. The colors pop on the wood. I think if I added something, it would take away from the photo. This one is super cool. We did a Montana cutout, transferred the photo, put it on white planks with the frame and added this cool little cutout. And it looks super rustic and just so cute. Here's my kids finished one. For this, I added the teal color. I kind of talked about adding a color to make it pop. I wrote love because it's for my husband's office, um, and so we wanted to give this to him. And we went pretty rustic on it because that's my style. Another Montana cutout. This time we did family, and I put this in a heart. <coughs> and here's an example of me writing. Sometimes I write on them, sometimes I don't. Put a grandma with a grandbaby. I think that is so... So cute. Um, for the wood decals, these I get from Hobby Lobby and they're like a dollar fifty. You can get love, um, memories, grateful, thankful, blessed, lots of fun options. Or even you guys, Walmart has really come out with some fun craft stuff. Um, and that's where I got this one. It would be very cool on a steak cutout or I don't know, let your imagination run wild but you can do lots of things with them um and so i just want to thank you guys for watching this video i hope that some of you will be inspired to try this feel free to ask me any questions in the comments i'll try and answer them and help you guys out any way i can and um thanks for watching